Hello, this is the TradeSite U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for Wednesday, July 13th, 2016. Hope you're having a good week. Here's a look at the dollar index. I'm sorry, here's a look at the ES front month futures contract. We had a big winner in Forex last night, so still looking at that. Uh, here's the ES front month futures contract. Daily chart, got a nice breakout going. Keep in mind that we are now eight bars up towards a new startup phase completion. And there's one other key signal to watch for today as well. When we go through this, I'll tell you when we get there. Uh, markets did gap up again. Uh, tried to go a little bit higher and lower early, and then that was pretty much the range for the day. It was not a very exciting day, even though volume uh, was decent at one point, almost 1.7 billion shares. Let's take a look at all the key indices that we watch. Crude oil back up dollar uh, eighty. This 46.55 basically hit the 10 period moving average. Gold finally rolled over a bit, down 22 on the YG contract. The S&P cash index up 15 points, but again, decent part of that was a gap, as you'll see in a moment. NDX 100 up 22.90, puts it right at that uh, green static trend line, and again, eight bars up here as well, so both of the major indices. One more far until that ninth candle. Here's this SOX up nine, new highs on the SOX. Biotechs up 21. VIX Dead flat at 13.55. And here's the key one. The trend closed again at low number at 0.65. We've been talking about this. Two high numbers dropped off the 10 period uh, moving average. That was a 2.2 and a 1.5 reading that were back on uh, 9, 10 days prior to the last two. And those dropped off the 10 period moving average. And so the 10 period moving average is this line we watch, this blue line. Very important. When it gets under 0.85, that is usually a sign of a top in the market. And we are there now for the first time in a year. So, uh, anyways, that's uh, that's about it on the trend. I need to make sure you're paying attention to that because we certainly wouldn't be holding stocks long overnight at this point in time. Nasdaq volume 1.7 billion shares for the session. Um, you know, it's better than the last couple of days for the most part, but still about average. Advanced decline ratio plus 12.93 on the Nasdaq, plus 12.44 on the New York. So decent market breadth. Again, Google recovers, goes up another 5.31, and again, that's eight bars up on the Google. Apple up 44 cents, and that's also eight bars up on the Apple. A lot of uh, topping signals appearing here now in the market. Amazon uh, closed up, actually closed down 557, but it was uh, it does have an eighth candle anyways. Netflix up a buck 30. So the ES, the NQs. Uh, Google, Apple, Amazon, all eight bars up, and the trend giving us that 0.83. Uh, 10-day moving average, not a lot of positives there, even though we look like great from the construction of the market in terms of the general chart pattern. Let's look at the intraday action so you can see what happened. Again, we gapped up, tried to go higher, tried to go lower. That was pretty much it for the morning. Inch to new highs over lunch. We got a 13 comer sell signal. That was the high of the day. Look at the way we used that pink risk line. Unbelievable. And then uh, closed and ended up closing just a couple points higher than we opened. On the NASDAQ side, the NQs, not nearly as positive, gapped up. We tried to go higher. That was the high of the session. Tried to go lower, and we already established the whole range of the day. NASDAQ was just dead flat. Some of those stocks look awful. It's definitely summer, even though volume was one point, almost 1.7 billion shares. All right, so what do we have for Wednesday uh, as we're approaching the midpoint of the week? Remember, tomorrow, Wednesday, is options uh, well, it's options expiration week, so Wednesday could be the options unraveling move. So we've got the MBA mortgage index at 7 a.m. We've got import export prices at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. Crude oil inventory is an hour into the bell, and the Fed base book and Treasury budget at 2 p.m. But the key here is, do we get the options unraveling move, or do they save it until Thursday? It doesn't have to be a big move because it's, for, it's July, it's a single expiration, and it's summer. But we still look for that because once you get past that first hour, if you get that move, it's always takes the market just in one direction. So you need to be aware of that. And if that happens to be the downside with that trend reading, hmm, that can get interesting. Still got some data left this week. Retail sales, CPI, PPI, industrial production, capacity utilization, but Friday's expiration. So we'll see what uh, we'll see what we get. Uh, hopefully some excitement. Had a couple of nice trades today. Futures were good. Forex was great. Uh, but I'd like to see more stocks get involved. It's just not a lot of institutions out there playing right now. You can feel it. And uh, just not a lot of stuff doing anything technical. So we don't overtrade. We don't force trades. We're here to make money, not make our brokers rich. So charts as usual brought to you by eSignal 12. If you've not yet taken the trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a good trading Wednesday.